doctor. I heard you say, Susan, that because he was somewhat kyphotic, meaning slightly forward bent, unable mm -hmm. to fully erect, be erect yeah. and standing and have that natural curvature and that arched position of a lumbar spine. And, and, uh, the fact that, um, he felt limited in that way when you asked him to move that way, that that at least opened the potential that, okay, perhaps if we can move Rick in this direction and it improves or doesn't worsen, it might open up an opportunity that there's some answers there, particularly since all the care before that had not really explored that direction. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I think with most with a lot of the back pain that we see, we see these major limitations in certain directions, right? And he had no limitation bending over that I can recall and just um, an extreme limitation in that direction. So in my mind, it's worth it to at least explore. And I knew I didn't have a lot of, um, I knew it was gonna be like, we either needed to like figure something out kind of quickly or he was, he, we had 30 days really from the time that he was, uh, going to be deciding on a surgery or not. So, um, I just remember on the first visit, uh, just the idea of standing up erect turned on his glutes. And so I basically started him out in a prone position, which did trigger his symptoms into the glutes and, um, and, but it eventually started to calm down, you know? So we were, I was kind of able to sneak in some movements, <laughs> not in like a, not in a way that I didn't want to be, uh, I wanted to feel like he was comfortable moving in that direction, but I also wanted to confirm, like, is this something I can help? So I needed sure. to know, can I get, can I get you to move in this direction without it being an irritant? Sure. Susan, tell me about, um, when you say it, it uh, in a, eventually improved, was mm -hmm. that within the same session he started seeing from the first attempting to try to backward bend in that prone lying position, stomach lying position? He, from the first repetition to at some point later within that same session, or do you mean on subsequent visits, he, he showed improvement in ability to do that and less pain in the buttocks? So I'll speak to what I have written down, Rick, you can chime in. The one thing that I remember from the first visit is that he felt like he was standing up taller, like symptoms had improved some, not, mm -hmm. not a massive amount, but he was standing up taller and feeling like his gait had improved. So, okay, excellent. Um, Rick, yep. what, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I remember doing that stuff created a lot of pain. Because yeah. um, I, 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 Susan's right, I just, I had no mobility. I couldn't bend backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't, on that first time we got on your table and I was doing yeah. press ups, yeah. uh, we, you know, we started with my hands, even with my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I got fully up. Maybe I oh, did yeah. in the last one, but I don't think so. No, was, you were, yeah. yeah. It was still very blocked, yeah. Right. And then, you know, you know, Susan gave me a, you know, an every two hour prescription for what I need to do. And the press ups were kind of at the heart of it. That night, I was able to get fully extended. Mm -hmm. Um, and so maybe that was, you know, the third or fourth attempt, you know, if I was doing 10 to 15 repetitions, it took me that long, you know, later that night before I could get one where I was fully extended. Okay. And do you remember, Rick, if initially it's quite painful, you're telling us at what point later did it become to where, Hey, this is not near as painful as it used to be. That's a great question. I, I felt like I was fighting through pain. Like, in other words, once I said to Susan, okay, I'll, I'll do the leap of faith and I'll try this. Um, I wanted to be careful that I was doing it exactly like she was asking me to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, if I couldn't do it, fine. I'll, you know, I had to live with that. But I really wasn't as concerned with my pain threshold in the beginning because I just assumed it's going to hurt. And um, so I, I, I wasn't monitoring the pain. Now, when I say in the beginning, like, you know, first couple of days, right. And, and then I would say within a week, um, clearly my ability to move and bend in certain situations had vastly improved. Uh, pain had come, had, had come down, no question about that. Um, 
but you know, we, when Susan laid out the four steps and the method and, and, and the one we were gearing up to is 24 to 14 hours of no pain, you know, I certainly wasn't there. Um, and, you know, Susan gave me a, a sense of what she experienced with other patients and that for some people it's, it's one session, for some people it's two sessions. Uh, three to four is not atypical, right? So I wasn't expecting it right away. Uh, we, we both probably got um, maybe a little frustrated when we were four or five weeks into it and we hadn't had that 24 to 48 hour period yet, right? Albeit things were getting better. Okay. Does that, yeah. does that answer your question? Absolutely. Hear the entire episode for free on iTunes, Spotify, other favorite podcast players, or go to mechanicalcareforum.com.